Hello and how are you all today? I've been having a great day. Welcome to my second ever After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at what you just saw in the preview, which is some 3D motion track text in a cinematic with a rainbow effect on it. So I'm going to position my keyboard so that it's not going to make a complete and utter horrible noise. All done. Now let's go on to composition and we're going to make a new composition. So I'm going to go with 1280 by 720, running it frame rate 30 and resolution half. Now the reason for this is, uh, and I hope you would know this already, but if you don't, the width and the height needs to be the same resolution as the cinematic, of course, and the frame rate you can make whatever you want. Um, I'm making it 30 frames per second for the purpose of this tutorial so that if we pre-render then it won't take too long. Same with the resolution so it won't take too long yet. We won't be compromising on quality too much. So let's click OK. So now we have our composition and actually I'm going to name my composition tutorial just because I want to. There we go. Alright, so now what we're going to do, we are going to import our cinematic into our timeline. So let's just bring it in. There we go. And now we have our cinematic in here. Not done yet though. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and find, we're going to drag it along. We're going to drag our cinematic along the timeline and we're going to find the part of the, of the cinematic or part of the footage in which the cinematic actually takes place. So it comes around about here. So this is where we start moving, as you can see. We start moving around here, and then, yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to trim it. We're going to trim the start of it by pressing Alt, open square bracket. We're going to go to the end of the composition and click Alt, close square bracket, and that will trim it just to where we need it to go. We're going to go on to Effect. We're going to click on perspective wherever that nutter is there we go and 3d camera tracker and now it is doing the magic of 3d motion tracking process stuff of course you can do this with every with other software such as Buju and stuff like that but today we're going to be doing it with After Effects another thing I would quickly point out is make sure that you put that you do this thing first you don't mess don't mess if you're messing around with your color correction right now you are wasting your time kind of what I want you to do is finish up with your magic bird or whatever you're using and just quickly apply the 3d camera tracker because it can take time depending on how long your cinematic is uh, the longer it is the longer it'll take to analyze in background so now it's just solving the camera and now we have our markers we have our points in which they can as you can see they are all they are all tracked to the to the footage so now we are going to let's say track it onto the onto the floor like you saw before i can rhyme any time we're going to just drag our cursor and highlight all of these marker points and we're going to right click it and we're going to go on to create null and camera in fact, an easier, uh, an even better way of doing this is deleting the null, and we're going to go on to two frames, which is well halfway through the through the, uh, through the cinematic. That's probably a better way of doing it, and we are just going to highlight it at the at the at the middle of the cinematic so that you get a better viewpoint. So right, so now we're going to do that again, and we're going to uh, right click it, and we're going to. Why is it not doing it? Let's try that again. Come on, After Effects, work with me here. All right, 3D camera tracker. Let's do this again. Right click and create null okay i don't know why it's doing that but okay it's staying there so that's fine so now it should say create null on camera but for me it just said create null so whatever it is it still tracks so it's all fine now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new text layer by pressing ctrl t i don't know what the what the shortcut command is for apple mac users but for windows it's ctrl t or you can just go up there and just click on that and it will give you a text tool and then we're going to just drag that across the screen and type in whatever we want to type in. This is going to be the text that is uh, tracked to the cinematic. So I'm going to just call it ZF uh, Zaki VFX Tutorials, but or tutorial because that is what this is. It's a Zaki VFX tutorial. Okie dokie. So we have that now. And if you want to, if you're lazy now and you just want to just track this, all you have to do is toggle the 3D button and it will it'll track there you go it's all tracked it's light but we're not going to do that because i think it looks kind of horrible so what we're going to do we're going to untrack it and we are going to mute it by going onto the eyeball kind of toggle at the at the very left of the timeline and just click it on zaki vfx tutorial or whatever your text layer is and it will mute the layer then we're going to go onto layer we're going to click on new we're going to click on solid we're going to make sure it's the correct comp size or if it's if you don't know if it is just click make comp size just to be certain and click ok you should know your composition size though then we're going to go onto effect and we're going to go onto video copilot element Right, from here we're going to go on to custom layers and we are going to go on to custom text and masks. You should know this already. If you don't though, it's fine. Now we're going to go into path layer 1 and we're going to click on that and we're going to go into the drop down box 
menu thing and just go into the muted text layer that, that is there. It could, it could be whatever, anything that, as long as, whatever it was here, it'll come up on, on here. So, yeah, that's fine. All right, so now we're going to go into scene setup. We're going to click on extrude so we, get, we can extrude the 3D layer. And it looks kind of horrible right now. I mean, it looks okay because it's 3D and 3D normally looks quite nice. Uh, but right now we're going to go into presets and we're going to double click shiny so that it is shiny as the preset might suggest. Click OK and you have a 3D uh, thing. Uh, you have a 3D motion track thingy mabop set and that's pretty nice so far. Um, so now what we're going to do, we're going to actually add the... No, actually no, before we add the textures, let's make sure that, we ha that we're happy with where our... With our where, blah, 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 where our text is in the cinematic and I'm not. So uh, I'm just going to go into World Transform for the purpose of the... No, I'm going to do it correct. I'm going to do it the right way so that I help you a lot learn. So we're going to go into Particle, Group 1, Particle Replicator. We're going to go on to Position X, Y, and we are going to basically just make it wherever you want to go. So, like, I, I want it to go a bit further right. That's why I said, well, that's why I did that. Um, and also I want to make the rotation uh, maybe a bit left, or sorry, right even on the on the, on the the Y rotation. And there we have it. looks a bit better. I, I prefer that anyway. That's my opinion. Uh, and I might even make it kind of closer to the... Uh, to the camera so now we have a very nice uh, this looks a bit different of course to the to the first one I suppose to what you saw at the start but I think it even looks a bit nicer so that's fine and if you really want to add some more realism you might want to add a bit of X rotation and there you go that looks very realistic or it, it looks obviously you wouldn't find Zaki VFX tutorial built onto the middle of the pier on GTA 5 nor would you find it on the real pier in at in Los Angeles but th that's a different story so now we're going to go and we're going to du duplicate this layer here the cinematic so we're going to press control D um, and then all you can if you you can just control and paste it it's really the same thing uh, we're actually going to for the purposes of this we're going to uh, would this be easier? Okay, just um, yeah. Cl right click on on the on the um duplicated layer and rename it to something of the sort like cinematic texture. There we go. Um, oh, sorry, that was my microphone stand. And actually, just to make things even easier, the bottom layer, the one that uh, that was the original one, you can rename that to something like cinematic. Uh, and just to remind yourself, do not change. Okay, even though it just came up with cinemat change, whatever. All right, so now what we're going to do with this layer is we are going to go to a half. We're going to go to the halfway or the halfway point of the of the cinematic, and we're going to go on to time. We're going to right click at time, freeze frame, and of course it comes up with an ugly message and a banner saying 3D camera tracker doesn't work with time remapping, and it doesn't. So what we're going to do, we're going to go on to this, we're going to stay on that layer, and we're just literally going to delete the 3D camera tracker. But remember, you still have it on this layer here, see? So now what you're going to do, because obviously right now you, fr you froze frame it, freeze framed it, whatever you want to call it, um... So now it's just going to stay like that. So now that looks kind of dodgy, doesn't it? You don't like that. That does not look good. So what we're going to do, we're just literally going to mute the cinematic texture layer. Boom. All right, so now it looks a bit nicer because the cinematic moves with the text. Okie dokie, now it gets onto the actual rainbowy part. No, it doesn't, actually. Now we're going to go onto our element layer. In fact, rename your element layer to element. Just make sure that you're, that you're organized. I normally organize my own stuff, but yeah. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go on to scene setup. Uh, no, we're not, we're gonna click okay. And then we're gonna go on to custom layers, custom texture maps. We're gonna go into layer one and we are going to click on the cinematic texture. Of course, that doesn't do anything at the moment. Oopsie, that, that's not doing anything at the moment with your text. So what you wanna do is click on scene setup. You wanna go on to your actual shiny preset uh, material and you wanna click on environment. You're going to go on to the drop down box and you're going to click on custom layer one, migrate, migrate game capture. It should say something like cinematic layer, but it didn't. So whatever. Um, but basically, no, sorry. It should just say custom layer one. That That's fine. Click OK. But you can't really see much, can you? So what we're going to do, we're going to add a bit. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to mess around with it a bit. Let's just say that much. So let's, let's mess up. Oh, okay. So that our, for some reason, my reflection is already there for some reason. I think that might be the preset doing it that actually, which is pretty handy. Um, but we can't really see what's going on exactly. No worries. So don't worry about that quite yet. 
or at least you shouldn't worry about it. So now you're going to go into, you, you should click OK, you go into Effect and Presets, and once my Ultra Effects decides to respond and behave itself, Ultra Effects, come on now, buddy, we're making a tutorial. Please stop freaking glitching out, thank you very much. We're going to go on to Full Dash Color Gradient, and we are going to apply that to our element layer. Boom, done. It looks disgusting because it looks 2D, kind of. It looks odd, but we can easily change that. We're going to go on to the full color grading and we're going to click on blending mode. It says none at the moment. Frick that, we want to go on to overlay. Bam! Okay, so it looks a bit different. Obviously, you can see a bit, you can see where it's coming along. You've got the, uh, the kind of the, the green here and you've got the, uh, Let's, let's zoom out. We've got the the pink here and the blue here, and there's a there's supposed to be a hint of, hint of yellow. It doesn't really show up very well. So what we're going to do, because it doesn't look great, obviously what we need to do now is go to Scene Setup uh, and go on to the Basic Settings and let's turn up the let's make this a bit grey. Okay, so now it looks a bit better. Um, and yeah, so click OK, click OK. And now it now now it's a bit brighter, but it still doesn't look completely sexy. No, it does not. So let's toy around with it a bit. So let's go on to the effects and presets. And the thing about editing everyone, in my opinion, is that toying around makes something normally it just makes something beautiful. So we're gonna click on glow. We're gonna type in glow, and then we're gonna apply that glow to the text and see how that works out. This is almost improvisation in it to an extent. Um, and then we're going to go into the glow threshold and let's turn it down a bit so that we can properly see it glow. Um, of course, the one problem we have right now is that the points aren't on the right points. That makes that made so much sense. So what we're going to do with here is we're going to go to the start of the cinematic and we are going to keyframe every single damn freaking point. Not the color, the point. There we go. Point one, point two, point three, and point four. Now let's apply those points to the corners of the text. Bam. Let's add that one over there. Let's add this one there. And let's add this one there. Now, of course, you can see it's already coming alive, but it doesn't look that bri bright, vibrant, the nice colors that you get. So what we're going to do, we're going to basically, well, just we're going to leave it at that for the moment, okay? We're going to leave it at that, uh, at the blandness. You'll you'll see how we, we will make it more vibrant in a bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to keyframe these points uh, to the text. So let's go to halfway through, and let's keyframe it again to the right points or positions. So keyframe the point one to that, uh, keyframe point two to the Y or the top right hand corner of your text, point three to the bottom left hand corner, and point four to the other. And, and remember, remember here now, everyone, is that you can, it's fine if you um, change what, you can change these colors to whatever you want. So you could make it red, but I'm not going to because I, I, I don't know, I just feel like making it yellow. So that's fine, that's, that's great. And you can change, you can blend it, or you can unblend it and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to go to where it was before. There we go. In fact, I think it looks nice like that, even though it literally makes no difference whatsoever. Of course, it still doesn't look bright and bright and bright there. <laughs> vibrant. So what we're going to do, we're going to add another one. We're going to go into full color gradient again. We're going to apply it. Okay. And of course, it looks horrible again. So remember, blending mode overly. There we go. And it's starting to look bright. It's starting to look nice. So we're going to go to the start of the cinematic. And of course, it, everything here looks green, which isn't what we asked for. It's not what we wanted. So we're going to do the same thing as we did with the with the first uh, four color gradient. We're going to keyframe every single point. Um, and sorry, my bad. There we go. Also, you can keep in the colors uh, throughout the timeline so you can change the colors. I'm not going to do that for this video, but that's what you could do. All right, so now we're going to go and just keyframe them here. Boom. Boom. It, it, this literally just adds a bit of vibrance to it. It's not that important. It just, it, it yeah, that's what, that's what it needs. Okie dokie. So now. Now we're properly in for it. We're going very contrasty, very vibrant, and let's go to the middle of the frame again, or sorry, to the middle of the uh, of the cinematic, and we're going to do the same thing, just to make sure that we keep that that color. All right, boom. Oh damn it! And boom, and another boom. Okie dokie. Coolie you. Okay, let's go to the end of the cinematic because 
Although it still does look quite nice, you can see that the yellow is merging in with the green and the pink is merging with the blue. And that's because we didn't keyframe it at the end. So what we're going to do is just, we're literally going to do the same thing that we did already. We're going to keyframe the yellow there. We're going to keyframe the green there. We're going to keyframe the pink there. And we're going to keyframe the blue there. Boom, there we go. It looks nice. And I'm actually going to take that glow out because I don't think it looks that great now, actually. Let's see. Uh, I prefer... Let's go into full so I can see it properly. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't know. I think I prefer it without the glow. Yeah, it looks better without the glow. In fact, I think I can afford going at full resolution here. Cool. All right, so now, basically, we pretty much have it done. Let me just make sure that it's completely completely right this is the uh this is the main this is the one that you saw at the start um okay so we have a bit of shine i forgot about that okay let's add the shine in and also um yeah that's that's basically the only thing that we've left out so go and type in so i suppose you'll need sh trap code shine for this uh add, type in shine into the effects and presets we're going to go on to shine and apply it to elements what happened to our text no don't worry, we're fine. We're just going to go into transfer mode and we're going to click on overlay. That's fine. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. But it's it's not rainbowy. It's not rainbowy. We, we want rainbowy. Okay, how are we going to fix that? It's fine. We'll, we'll fix it now. We're just going to apply it above the four color gradients. And boom, 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 boom. It looks beautiful. We now have beautiful rainbowy text it's nice isn't it so that's pretty much everything that you might want to know for the tutorial um if you want to know how it makes the cinematic lines like i did there i actually masked it because i just I was, I was a lazy bugger um and if you want to know what i did there i literally just went on to i think it was proportional grid uh something like that and then i just masked the freaking the freaking cinematic and that's what i did that's that's how it worked so that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy please leave a rating all that great stuff if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below um and uh, if you have any requests for tutorial both in game or kind of more irl stuff leave them down in the comment section below I, i'll do animation like 2d animation if i can do 3d animation to an extent not too much so i will do some gameplay kind of montage effects i can do those and just other things so yeah just ask me and i will do them if i know how to do it which i most likely will because i practice a lot anywho thank you all so much for watching i hope this helped i will see you all in the next one this is Aki saying goodbye let's roll the outro all right time to do the outro so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy please smash that like button and show your support now click on that video preview that you're watching right now to watch more delicious videos i will see you all in a bit goodbye world